My dear students, I am literally amazed by the fact that how many times some topics are repeated in examinations, say NEET examinations, say AIMS examinations, PGI examinations, MRCP examinations, MRCS examinations. Somehow a common denominator can be that these topics tend to be very important. So first of all, the topic I would be today taking up would be colonic polyps and the polyposy syndromes. So as far as the colonic polyps are concerned, you have to know the classification of the benign polyps first. So the polyps which come under the benign category are number one, the hyperplastic polyps, number two, the hematomatous polyps, number three, the juvenile polyps, and number four, the inflammatory polyps. We need not be much concerned about these types of polyps. Now, on the other hand, we can be having some polypos syndromes which can be having a great malignant potential and taking them one by one. The first thing which comes to my mind is the FAP syndrome or the familial adenomatosis polypos syndrome. Knowledge of pathology suggests that we know that there are those tumor suppressor genes and especially there is this one important tumor suppressor gene which we call as the APC gene. And this APC gene is located on the chromosome 5. Any alteration of this APC gene can lead to familial adenomatosis polyposis syndrome. And basically, this disease is an autosomal dominant condition. Now, what is important about this thing is that it is for a heritable basis and any family member having a history of FAB syndrome. His progeny should be well evaluated for the development of FAB syndrome because the malignant potential of the disease is very high and the risk of transformation into malignant poly polyps in this condition is also high. Now, what can it present with? It can present with hundreds of polyps which can carpet the whole colonic and the intestinal mucosa. There can be widespread diffuse gastrointestinal polyposis. But another important thing is that this polyposis is not limited to only GIT and it can be associated with full-fledged highly aggressive cancers in the other parts of the body, say pancreatic cancers, say periemporary carcinomas, say the cancers of the nervous system like the medulloblastoma. In addition to the gastric and the colonic malignancies itself. So FAB syndrome is a very important component of malignant polypos syndromes. We will be dealing with FAB syndrome pathogenesis in detail in pathology. This, these points should be remembered about the FAB syndrome. Now, after this, are there certain other conditions which are associated with polypos of the colon? or intestinal polyps, yes definitely and one of the things which comes to my mind first is the Peutz-Jogger syndrome and what it is it is basically composed of hammer to mat types of polyps usually benign but these polyps can also turn malignant so PJ syndrome is very important that it is composed of hammer to mat polyps in addition to a very important Thing, and that is mucocutaneous pigmentation. There can be pigmentation in the mucosae, the lips, the oral mucosa, and multiple other places in the body because of deposition of melan melanin, which is the pigment. Now, a question would always be coming like this in your examinations you would be asked a boy presents with oral mucocutaneous pigmentation and hematomatous polyps. The answer is. A part blood, B part something, C part something, D part something. And you know, it should be PJ syndrome. So P. Jogger syndrome is one of the first things which comes to my mind. And you have to remember in this hemorrhage polyps, as I mentioned, the increased mucocutaneous pigmentation and the presence of melanin. Okay. After that, is there anything else? Yes, you have to remember something like Gardner syndrome. And what is this Gardner syndrome? It is somehow related to FAP, 
because the same chromosome 5 is implicated in Gardner syndrome as well. But this Gardner syndrome consists of the interspinal polyposis. In addition to some of the other important things which you have to very essentially remember, combination of osteomas, desmoid tumors, some cysts in the oral cavity like the dendigero cysts and there is a high risk of turning of these polyps into adenocarcinoma colon. So this is something which is asked about Gardner syndrome. Now, once we say something about Gardner syndrome, there is something related to it, the Turcot syndrome. And very one important component of Turcot syndrome is that it is associated with malignancies of the nervous system that sets it apart from the other polyposis syndromes. We have some groups of patients who present with a disease called as Cronkite Kennedy syndrome. Cronkite Kennedy syndrome. And what is this? It is a combination of intestinal polyposis plus embryological ectodermal defects. And what these ectodermal defects are, they are present with something like alopecia, loss of hair, or something like nail atrophy. So nail atrophy, alopecia, in addition to intestinal polyposis, would comprise this syndrome because our knowledge of embryology suggests that these hair and the appendages of the skin, the nails, the sweat glands, the sebaceous glands, they all tend to be ectodermal derived structures. Now, so we have gone across FAP, we have gone across PG syndrome, we have gone across Gardner syndrome, we have gone across Turcot syndrome. Is there anything else? Yes, we will be coming across Rendu Oslo Weber syndrome. And you know, it is GIT polyposis might be there in association with vascular lesions, and these vascular lesions are the telangiectasis. It is not the telangiectasis only in the GIT which can be associated with the polyps, but the, there can be these telangiectasis in much other parts of the body, like the mesopharynx. So the combination of telangiectasis with polyposis would set an example for rendu ostler weber syndrome. Now, there's another association which we call as the Muir-Torre syndrome. And what is Muir-Torre syndrome? It is, it is a combination of GIT polyposis and in addition to what? In addition to sebaceous adenomas, in addition to fibromas, in addition to fibrosarcomas or there can be lipomas also associated with this condition. So what is important about these GIT polyposis is that they can be associated with certain other lesions, lesions of the nervous system, lesions of, of the skin, lesions of the uh, uh, fat uh, for the tumors. So you have to remember the components of these tumors, say Gardner syndrome, say Turcot syndrome, say Muritori syndrome. So important thing is to remember the associations and the pathology and the genesis and the chromosome involvements of the fat and the Gardner syndrome like the chromosome 5 and the genes implicated like the APCG and the potential for malignant behavior. I think if you just remember these things, these can aid you a lot in your examinations. Thanks a lot.